Hi, welcome. In this video, I'll show you how to build an application that uses PubSub over IPFS. IPFS stands for Interplanetary File System and is much more than a file system. It's an entire network stack for the decentralized and peer-to-peer -peer web. It allows you to build truly serverless web applications. If you want to find out more about IPFS, you can head out to IPFS's website, ipfs.io. In this screencast, we'll be using JS IPFS, which is a JavaScript implementation of IPFS that works on Node.js and in a modern browser. Our goal today is to create an open chat room where different clients can talk to each other and know of each other's presence. The agenda will be installing some dependencies, serving static files, bundling with Browserify, creating an IPFS node, creating a room, sending and receiving messages, and broadcasting messages. The product of this demo is located in this GitHub repo. Feel free to download it, install it, and poke around. It's simple, and the instructions are in the readme. If you're curious, I'll next show you the steps you need to take to create this application. You're going to need some things to make this happen, namely Node.js, JS IPFS, IPFS pub sub room, Browserify, and an HTTP server. Also, you will need to know a bit of basic JavaScript to be able to understand this video. Next, I'll show you the steps you need to take to install them. If you don't have Node.js installed, you can head out to nodejs.org and follow the instructions there. After that, you can create the project directory and run npm init to initialize our application package.json manifest. Here, we're going to answer some questions that are going to be used to fill the package.json manifest. Okay, so now we have a package.json manifest that we can add our dependencies to. Next, you'll need to install HTTP server so that we can serve some static files. We can now create a start script in our package.json file that starts our HTTP server. Here, we're going to pass some options to HTTP server, namely "-c-1", which will make HTTP server not cache files, then the port number, which will be 12345, and then the path for the directory it will use to serve public assets. Mind you that this HTTP server only serves static files, it will not do anything else. Now, we'll need to create a public directory that will host our static files. Now, we need to create a really simple static web page that the only thing it does is include this JavaScript file containing our room app. We can now start our web server and try to load our web page. As you can see, it says that you couldn't find our app.js application file. So let's fix that. To create our application, we'll need to create a single package JavaScript file containing the entirety of our app and all the dependencies. For that, we're going to use Browserify, which you should install using npm. Cool, so now we can create an npm compile script that we can run from the command line. For that, we're going to use Browserify, which we just installed, and pass in the entry point for our application, and also the output path for the bundle JavaScript. Also, we pass minus "-d", which will enable debugging for development mode. Let's then create an application that simply outputs Hello World for now, and we'll save it in source slash app.js. Okay, so now let's compile it and try it out. Cool, it outputs hello world, which proves that our setup is working. Cool, so now we need to install JS IPFS, which we'll do using npm. 
Okay, cool. So back to the code. So we're going to create our PFS nodes. First, we're going to require a PFS and then create it uh, with some options. Uh, the options will be uh, enabling PubSub using the experimental uh, flags. And we're going to listen for the ready event on a PFS nodes. And when it's ready, we're going to ask for its ID. Uh, if there's an error doing that, we're going to throw it. Otherwise, just, just printing console logging, uh, PFS node is ready with the address and then the ID of the address. So let's try it out. Let's open the browser. Cool, looks like it's working. Uh, but so that we can test this using the same browser instance but in different uh, windows, uh, let's create a uh, different repo, a different IPFS repo for each of the tabs, which we'll do by creating a random repo path. Let's compile it and then start our browser different windows, in two windows. And we'll see that the node IDs are going to be different, hopefully. Now we're going to create a PubSub room on top of IPFS's PubSub. IPFS already provides PubSub, but we're going to use a, a package named IPFS PubSub room that simplifies that. Okay, so now let's jump into the code and create our uh, PubSub room. First, we'll have to require the IPFS PubSub room package, and then we'll have to create a room from that constructor. Uh, the room requires uh, an IPFS node, so it will be the first argument. The second argument will be the name of the room, which we'll name an IPFS PubSub demo. Okay, so now we're going to listen to some interesting events that may happen on the room, namely when peers join and leave the room. So when the peers joins, we're just going to console log um, peer joins, peer x joins. And we're also going to do the same when the peer leaves, so peer x leaves. So let's try it out, compile it. And then refresh our browsers. So PFS ready, and then each other, uh, each browser found out about each other. And when I close one, it should say that peer left. Yep. Now that we have a room, we can send and receive messages between peers. So. Um, First, uh, whenever a peer joins, uh, we're going to send it a message by using room.sendTo, uh, first the peer address and then the message, which can be any string or buffer. Welcome message. And also we need to listen for when we get a message from any given peer. And so we're going to listen to the message event, get a message, and the message contains a from uh, which contains the, the address of the peer that sent us, and also a data attribute, uh, which is a buffer, we're going to convert it to a string. Okay, so we can compile it and test this on our application and see if we get a greeting message from the other peers. So let's refresh this one and then recreate another node on this tab, on this window. So yeah, we got the message, welcome. Cool. Besides sending a message to a specific peer, we can also broadcast, sending the same message to all connected peers. So we're going to simulate a group chat app by sending the same message to all connected peers every two seconds by using room.broadcast and then the message string or buffer. And test it out in the browser. So we refreshed and so every two seconds you can see that they are exchanging messages. Okay, super. In this episode we saw how you can start creating a PubSub web app based on IPFS. So we set up our project, installed some dependencies, and created a room, 
where we were able to listen to room membership changes as well as receive and send messages. If you're interested, as an exercise that I leave to you, you can create a chat web app based on these primitives. So this is all for today. Thank you very much for watching and I hope to see you soon. Bye bye.